Jacob, when he was small, used to joke and say, well, I'm going to play rugby for Ireland someday. And he used to go, yes, yeah, son, right. Like all kids, he had that dream, and I suppose he held on to it. It's a strange sort of experience. It's just been step after step after step. And Stockdale in space. Stockdale scores. Hectic, mad, um, but fun. West of Belfast at Lurgan Rugby Club, they're not easily impressed. Until the subject turns to the Ulster boy made so good so suddenly. Jacob Stockdale is a phenomenon. In last year's tournaments, he broke the all time try record. Ireland won a Grand Slam. And then Stockdale inspired an historic win over New Zealand. It's been amazing. If you'd said to me a couple of years ago that that would have happened, I wouldn't have believed you. And there was a lot of times where I he was like, rugby's not for me. I didn't see myself as a good rugby player, and I was about maybe 14 or 15, kind of fell behind everybody in terms of size. He grew up all of a sudden. He also really disciplined himself to, to put in the training. He was bigger, he was faster, he was stronger. He has that attitude that if you don't get it right the first time, well, you learn from it and you do it again and you get it right the next time. I just feel incredibly lucky that I did keep playing and I did decide to pack it in because I love playing rugby and if I wasn't playing for Ireland, I'd be playing for Lurgan. His impact has resonated most in Northern Ireland, but his province, Ulster, and of course his club. Lurgan is a town that needs its narrative changing. Unfortunately, Lurgan has had a, a dark history as well as a very proud history. The 70s and 80s, the town was decimated by car bombs and sectarian murders. This area that we live in has been known as the Killing Triangle. Lurgan obviously was pretty infamous during the Troubles. And obviously there's a lot of combat that went on during that time and hasn't really lost that stigma. We were lucky enough that Jacob and his family have taken us on board. They're really a part of the fabric of the club. Rugby's in the blood. His grandfather played to a high level. That wasn't bad, but there was another calling. I work as the coordinating chaplain in McGabry Prison, which is Northern Ireland's high security prison. And I was approached to see if Jacob would come in to be involved in a scheme to encourage prisoner confidence and well-being. My visit into the prison made me appreciate that the guys in there are just normal guys, you know, who just have made a mistake somewhere down the line and trying to correct their lives. Jacob invests a lot into young people, the childhood he's had, how things have come together for him, and he would see that as something that he would want other people having the same opportunity for. He's proving it with action in Lurgan, leading a peace project, using rugby in a town still blighted by contested land and no-go areas. There is still a divide. Some pockets of Lurgan are in the top 10 most socially deprived areas in the country. Two weeks ago, he went into four local schools. He's actually been responsible in enrolling over 200 of those kids for a Peace Four programme. I'm thrilled that Jacob has used his exposure because he realised that even at the age of 22, a lot has been given to him. We're really the only professional sport where there's a team in all of Ireland. In every other sport, you have to choose one or the other. Rugby, you don't. People look at that and, and they realise that it's not just a sport that's only for one side of the community, and I think that's massively important. He may come across as quite relaxed and easygoing, but Jacob at the same time takes life very seriously, and he's very determined to be the best in the world. I have no doubt that there's a load more Irish tries to come in them. So, Brian Risk, watch out. Jacob's coming for your record. You've brought the Six Nations trophy back to Lurgan. What chance the World Cup? <laughs> I don't know, that's a dangerous question to be asking now, but uh, if we win the World Cup, I'd say the, the Cup will definitely be coming to Lurgan at some point, yeah.